Welcome back to Snippets with Ken. We got a short one for you today, but it's got some good stuff in it. I'm going to show you how to cut a square hole or a round hole in sheet metal. Let's go on inside and get started. Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. Oh, Snippets with Ken, just because it's going to be a close to a, a short one. We've got a couple of new members of the Fabulous Fabricators Club. I want to show you, this is, um, this is Jake. Jake didn't tell us what town he was from. Can you see what Jake's got going on here? Jake has made two tool trays and a pan and a scribe. So we know he's watched several of our videos. Look at that. Jake, you were getting it. Jake didn't say what town he was from, but uh, it's, let's just go with Awesomeville. Jake is from Awesomeville somewhere. Thank you, Jake. Love your stuff, man. I love the way he modified the scribe. The one in our lesson from Grab Bag of Tools looked like this. But look what Jake did. Jake made it his own. He used his, the common numbers that uh, work good for him and made it his own. And I love it because along with that, I want to show you we had a lesson. We made a dustpan. You guys have seen that maybe. So look at this. Gary from Sydney, Australia made a dustpan for his father-in-law and painted it the same color as his father-in-law's uh, 58 Chevy. And not only did Gary paint it the same color as his father-in-law's car, look what he did here. Look what we did. Boring old handle. Look what Gary did. Come on, Gary. <laughs> So um, one of the things that I like about what Gary did and the same thing as Jake, I'm not asking you guys to copy me to the dimensions. Obviously, this is 9 by 11. Make one smaller. Make one bigger. Make the handle whatever reflects your personality or your use. So this is very flattering for me to see people take what we have uh, exampled and you made it your own and man I love that that's a great handle so that's one thing that I want to encourage you guys as you watch these lessons you don't have to copy us exactly you don't have to make your tool tray the same height as ours oh look at this here's the other thing that Jake did if in Jake's he made two tool trays a scribe and he also made a pan and oh that's right thank you baby um jake said he made these out of an old file cabinet so how's that for affordable so jake took a discarded file cabinet and made two useful tool trays and a box and a scribe and i can't even imagine the sense of accomplishment that jake had when he got all these things done you're a rock star, Jake. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for participating. And Gary, same through you. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you modified it. Make it your own. I want to encourage more of you to do that. So we're going to put Jake and Gary into our fabulous fabricators. We'll punch holes in this and do this later. But I want to get right to today. So thank you, guys for being in our fabulous fabricators. So the thing I want to do today is I want to show you how to cut a square hole or a round hole. This is a plenum. Plenum is just a fancy word. It means an air chamber. Um, and, and some of these words are regional. Uh, I grew up in uh, California. So this thing right here is, we always call this an end cap because it caps off the end. Uh, if I didn't have an end cap in this, then it would be a duct. This would just be a piece of duct that air is flowing through. But once I cap off the end, uh, in some places they would call this a plug. 
and uh, but for where I'm at and your application may be regional, it could be different. Well, once you cap it off, then it becomes an air chamber, which is known as a plenum. So the first time I saw somebody cut a square hole out of sheet metal, I was fascinated. And I thought it was awesome. I was like, man, I hope someday I'll be really old and my wife and I will start a YouTube channel and I will show somebody somewhere around the world how to cut a square hole in sheet metal. This sheet metal just happens to be a plenum air chamber and we are going to cut a hole in here. So one of the things I like to do, well not one of the things, here's how we do it. If I'm out in the field, I've been a licensed air conditioning and heating contractor for about 46 years. So air conditioning and heating and sheet metal they go hand in hand because a lot of the parts we use in HVAC are made of sheet metal. So I like a screwdriver. Hun, would you get a close look at this right here? I'm going to try to... I like a screwdriver. Number one, it has to be pretty new because it's got to be sharp. And I like the ones with the squarest corner possible. There are several brands that have this same effect on here. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to go out into the field and we're going to cut a hole in our 26 gauge galvanized plenum. So the way we start a hole in sheet metal is we take our screwdriver, the screwdriver with a nice square corner. And I want you to, can you see that right there? You got a good view on that? So notice I'm holding it at an angle and I've got one point on the sheet metal. All right, this might get this might get loud. All right, but let's go for it. Now I'm going to strike this and knock a hole right in the sheet metal. So then I just leaned the screwdriver. At first I made a hole and then I cut it for a little bit. I went sideways. And now I'm going to go back to that original cut and I'm going to lean the screwdriver over and I'm going to twist it. Can you see that? Leaning and twisting? Mm -hmm. All right. You know, maybe it'll be better if I do this. That trash can is full of trash, but it also makes a really good. You can you see it right there? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take our reds in this case. Uh, maybe I'll do it on the floor, huh? How's that? Most sheet metal work's done on the floor anyway. So here's what we're gonna do. Now the part that I twisted. The reason I twisted it was just to open up a gap. Now I'm just twisting. I'm not pushing. Now we're going to start right here with my reds. I'm going to stick the snip into that place where I twisted. And I'm just going to pretend like I'm cutting a hole, baby, and then you'll, you'll get the camera angle right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come over here. We're going to come to this corner. And we're going to stop right in the corner. Now I'm going to back up a little bit. And I'm going to slip into this next straightaway. Never cut all the way to the end of your snips until you get all the way to the corner. Back up. Come over here. Don't go to the end of your snips till you get to the end. All right, that's the end. That's the end of the snips. So one nice thing about the offset snip is I can use the offset snip to finish up my cut. Let's fold that out of our way. Into the cut. Now, 
like I was saying, with the offset snip, I can get in here and finish this square cut and do it all with one snip. But if you don't have the offset snip, all you got to do to finish off the corners is go back to your greens. Now we have cut here with our reds. If you don't have the offset snip, you're just going to come back from this direction with your greens into the into the snip. There we go. Same thing here. Wasn't that cool? That's how you cut a square hole. Now, I'm just going to smash these corners a little bit. Make them beautiful and wow, they're beautiful. So now let's go to our round hole. We're going to do the same thing. I'm using a ball peen hammer because this is a hammer that a lot of you might have. Ordinarily, sheet metal guys use a sheet metal hammer, but they're kind of hard to find. They're not available at hardware stores, and this is. And uh, so that's the reason we're using a ball peen today. So let's go through that again. I'm starting with my screwdriver. And don't start in the middle. I like to start somewhere over near the, near the corner where I'm actually going to make my cut. All right, here we go. I'm going to strike it right here. Then I'm going to stand it up, and I'm going to go sideways. Now I'm going to go back to where I started, and I'm just going to twist the screwdriver. All I'm doing is giving myself an entry point for my snips. <laughs> now all we're going to do is come over here and we cut a little bit at a time whenever you're going on a radius I'm cutting and swinging the back end of the snip around never go to the end of your snip since we're right here and I've just told you don't do it watch this see how I'm going to the end of my snip Look at that. You might tell yourself, I'm going to cut it like this, but I'm just going to be real careful. And then you're not going to end up being careful. That's going to end up ruining your day right there. Don't do that. Don't go to the end of your snip. So as you're closing the snip, before you get to the end, you open the snip up. But as you're opening the snip, you're also moving forward in the cut. So let's watch that. I want you to see before I get to the end. So before I get to the end, can you see how I'm opening up the snip and moving forward? And that way I always begin again at the same place that I ended. Now you can see I'm only using a small portion of the snip and that's because this is such a tight radius. If this was a 10 inch, this is a six inch. If this was a 10 inch radius, then I could use more of the snip. But since it's a small diameter, look, at we're only using a very small part of the snip. And I always cut this... I always cut this part off. Throw that in the trash separately. Get these little sharp deals off of here. So, I've shown you don't go to the end of your snips. You're going to create a hazard and uh, then you're going to leak all over the place. 
If you're working on carpet, you might stain the carpet. So, when I thought about, I just wanted to show you this real quickly because I remember the first time I saw somebody cut a square hole in sheet metal. I was like, that's one of the coolest things ever. So there you go. Square hole, round hole, reds and greens. Oh, one, one last thing before you go. Let's say you're not in a plenum. Let's just say you have a flat piece of sheet metal and you want to start a hole. Here's one of the things I do. Let's say this is my hole. There's the middle. Is our door unlocked, baby? Hold on a second, don't go anywhere. All right, last part of the demonstration, snippets with Ken. So all I'm using is a piece of duct tape. And instead of uh, trying to start this on the bench, then I'm gonna work my way back. I'm just twisting, giving myself a place to start. So you can use a roll of duct tape or a coffee can, whatever you gonna do. So today we're doing stainless steel in a taco truck, but before we get started on the taco truck, I just wanted to show you this. It's a quick lesson, but look how cool that is. Um, I don't think we're missing anything. I think we're ready. I want you guys to have a good day. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by and with uh, snippets with Ken. We're glad to have you. Uh, sheet metal is fun at yahoo.com. If you guys make something, send us a picture. We'll see you on the next one.